There's a in film of the dynamics the effect of delta H and delta S on spontaneity. Uh, zoom on this here. That if you have a positive delta H positive delta S, then it's spontaneous at all high temperatures. Uh, negative delta H and positive delta S spontaneous at all temperatures. Negative negative spontaneous at low. And positive negative is not spontaneous at any temperature. G measures the ability, the energy available to uh, the useful process. Uh, Josiah Willard Gibbs, for constant temperature process, says that delta G equals delta H system minus T delta S of the system. This is how it's generically written here under standard conditions. Uh, delta G uh, is negative, reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. It's positive, reaction is non spontaneous in the forward direction. So spontaneous in the reverse, and delta G equals zero, the reaction is in equilibrium. Uh, free energy and work. Delta G is maximum amount of work possible at a given temperature and pressure. Uh, delta E equals Q plus W, heat plus work. Amount of work obtained is always less than the maximum because some of the free energy is changed to heat due to the change. Can't be 100% efficient. Cars are approximately 30% efficient, um, and that's for a really good car. Uh, Henry Bent's two laws of thermodynamics. First law, you can't win, you can only break even. Second law, you can't even break even. The dependence of free energy on pressure. Enthalpy H is not pressure dependent. Entropy S depends on volume, so it also depends on pressure. S for large volume. Entropy for large volumes is always greater than entropy for small. Entropy at low pressure is greater than entropy at high pressure. So, a few things about this equation though. Watch out for the units. Delta G sub naught, kilojoule per mole, kilojoule per mole, Kelvin, and joules per Kelvin per mole. This is all per mole of reaction. Standard free energy of reaction. The free energy change per reaction when it occurs under standard state conditions. Okay, you'll notice here you've got your products minus your reactants according to their coefficients. And this is standard free energy of formation free energy when one mole compound is formed from the elements. And uh, delta G sub F, any element in stable allotropic form is zero. So here's some examples for some standard states with, again, that's sub naught. Standard free energy change for the following reaction. Is the reaction spontaneous at 25? So delta G is less than zero. Yes, it's spontaneous. Calculate free energy with Hess's law. You can put those together. And here, this is negative 3 kilojoules, so diamond grain to graphite. Standard free energy formation. There's an AP level problem to look at. Here, you know, it's spontaneous, non-spontaneous. Spontaneous is the absolute value. It's greater than the absolute value of T delta S. And spontaneous if the absolute value of T delta S is greater than the absolute value of delta H. This is an entropy-driven picture here in spontaneity of chemical reactions. Delta H, delta S, and delta G for this equation here. Above what temperature will this reaction become spontaneous? So here we've got our equation, we plug in the values. This is an equilibrium equation, so delta G sub naught equals zero at equilibrium. Here's our setup here. Temperature that it will be um, spontaneous is 835 degrees Celsius. So this is the equilibrium pressure of CO2. Now, during phase transitions, the system is in equilibrium. So delta G naught is zero. Dynamic equilibrium is established after the kinetics occur, of course. So that's delta H naught minus T delta S. Liquid to gaseous water at equilibrium. You can solve for temperature. It's 373 Kelvin, that's 100 degrees Celsius. And your delta H is 40.79 kilojoules. So your delta S is 49. Okay. Equilibrium point occurs at the lowest value of free energy available to the reaction system. The more negative the value for delta G, 
the brain is already the reaction will proceed while we go to the equilibrium. At equilibrium, n is equal to zero and q equals k. So how are they related together? Delta G equals negative RT log of K. So negative two point three oh three RT log of K. Put the DKC or KP. T is absolute temperature in Kelvin. R is equal to one joules per mole per Kelvin. And this is an example of a problem that would use something like that. So value of the standard free energy change, temperature at which the equilibrium costs occur, reaction is equal to one. Here's how we do part A and part B. At 1500 degrees Celsius for this reaction, this is the equilibrium constant. F is equal to delta H. Enthalpy for this temperature positive, negative, zero, or cannot be determined. So Gibbs free energy for non standard conditions. T is the absolute temperature. R and Q is the reaction with quotient for non standard conditions. At equilibrium, Q equals K. There's our reaction equation. Last problem here is just liquid water going to gaseous hydrogen and oxygen in equilibrium. We've got our delta G. We calculate the KP to the end unit. So part A is an equation. KP. Plug in the FP298. And solve for the KP. And that gives us a value of 6.15 times 10 to the negative 84. QP is the pressure under those conditions. Plug it in to our delta G. And that gives us 4.79 times 10 to the negative 50 degrees per mole for the delta G. And to make that into kilojoules, we're sending it out. So the K value, again, is dependent on temperature. So log of K is proportional to 1 over T. Straight line of log of K versus 1 over T. Slope is negative delta H over R. So free energy versus the extent of the reaction. <laughs> and the delta G is less than 0. You'll notice here. Q is less than K here. Here is equilibrium right here. And here Q is greater than K. And then here we're going from reactants to products. This is the extent of the reaction. And the free energy amount changes. So here it's positive delta G. So for a rubber band, what's happening in a rubber band is you stretch that rubber band out. It starts out with a state of high entropy. A state of high entropy when it touches an upper lip, it feels cool. Then when it is stretched, it goes from a state of high entropy to low entropy. It becomes more order. So as it becomes more order, as it becomes more order, the temperature increases. Then you feel heat and you're moving off. Children, increasing entropy in the world one day at a time. Here's another example of free energy for biology. Positive 29 kilojoules. K is less than 1. That's how ATP was alanine, glycine, and water. It's ADP. It's phosphoric acid and alanine glycine. This reaction here is negative 2 kilojoules. K is greater than 1, so K goes to products. So this is how you can get alanine and glycine together by using ATP. So here's the structure of ATP and ADP in ionized form. 
system is easily to create reaction to an infinity point now is ordinals. So you want to calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction. That's what we'll try to do. And that's it.